Since January, nearly 600 cases of Ebola have been confirmed in Guinea, Sierra Leone and Liberia. The meeting held in Ghana shows that the region's health ministries recognise the scale of the outbreak. Working in all three affected countries, MSF hopes that this awareness will convert into concrete action because the outbreak is far from under control. The teams in Gekedu in Guinea have treated 130 patients and 31 have recovered, like this young boy. He's bitter now. We've just told him that the test results are confirmed. He's negative. So now he'll go for his last disinfection shower and then we'll take him back to his village. Communication is key to combating Ebola, as fear and stigmatization must not prevent the sick from going to health centers. Each time a recovered patient returns home is an opportunity to raise awareness among the community. The sooner a patient receives treatment, the greater the chances of survival. It's prayer time here in PK5 district. Several thousand Muslims are living around the central mosque in what used to be one of the capital's major trading areas. The other Muslims have already left Bongi for the east of the Central African Republic or a neighboring country. Mpoko camp at Bongi airport is just a few kilometers away. It has transformed into a vast slum and is home to 30,000 Christians. Those still in the camp are the most vulnerable. They can't go back home because it's not safe or because they've lost everything. They've got no home to return to. They're the poorest people and the camp is becoming a slum. 90% of Muslims in the west of the country have fled abroad. Those still in the Central African Republic are trapped in enclaves like this church compound in Kano, where close to a thousand people have taken refuge. Protected by African Union soldiers, they are right in the middle of the town, which is held by the mainly Christian self-defense militia Anti-Balaka. Anyone leaving the church risks being attacked. If peace returns, we can go home, but there's nothing left. Our homes are destroyed. Everything's been smashed or stolen. MSF is running health clinics in places like Kano, PK5 and Mpoku to assist the thousands of displaced who find themselves even more vulnerable to malaria, diarrhea and respiratory infections now that it's the rainy season. Four MSF staff members were abducted during an assessment of healthcare facilities in Kamango. One year later, MSF is still without news of Chantal, Philippe, Richard and Romy. Their names have been added to the long list of people who have gone missing in North Kivu. On a des preuves de vie indirectes via des, des, des prisonniers de guerre. We've had indirect proof of life from prisoners of war or former hostages who have told us that our colleagues are still alive. From day one, we have had a crisis team unit doing everything in its power to, to find them and bring them home to their families. There are thought to be several hundred people being held hostage in North Kivu. Military operations have enabled the Congolese army to regain control of a number of areas formerly held by rebel forces. MSF is calling for all care to be taken to safeguard the lives of the hostages. Every day we see people die from a lack of blood. We are here this morning to honour blood donors in Kutiala. In Kutiala, in South Mali, MSF teams managed the country's second biggest blood bank. On the 14th of June, they wanted to thank donors for helping them to save lives and raise awareness of the importance of giving blood. To stop people dying from lack of blood, more regular donors are needed. We have 70 to 80 regular donors, people who've given their blood more than twice. We want to triple that. 
Paediatric staff in Kutiala perform around 6,000 blood transfusions annually, mainly between July and December during the malaria peak. Children with malaria often suffer from severe anemia and require an emergency life-saving blood transfusion, as do women who lose a lot of blood during childbirth and road casualties. Shortly after World Blood Donor Day, Kutiala residents started coming to the health centre to sign up as voluntary blood donors. Are you going to continue to donate blood? Yes, I hope so. MSF runs clinics in South and Central Mexico to provide primary and mental health care to migrants en route from Honduras, Guatemala and Salvador. Mostly men, there are women and children too. They've left everything behind to head for Mexico or the United States. It was the threats from the gangs that made me flee my country. They are the reason I left, not poverty. I left because I wanted to be safe. 30 to 40 percent of migrants from Honduras and Salvador flee the violence they are subjected to back home. But further violence lies ahead during the journey north. Migrants who took part in a survey conducted by MSF repeatedly describe theft, extortion and mugging. We are seeing patients that have been kidnapped and during this kidnapping well, have been tortured or, or, or beaten uh, nearly every day or forced to, to, to work. We are, we are seeing cases of sexual violence uh, that are specifically affect uh, women and, and, and minors, uh, both uh, boys and girls. The assistance MSF provides is not enough. The humanitarian visa process needs to be improved and accelerated to offer migrants better protection.